Hi everyone, welcome to Theory to Practice, and today we're going to talk about historical versus implied volatility. So first I'll go through my agenda and then we'll jump right into it. So I wanted to introduce myself, for those of you who don't know me, go over a code overview, and then I will basically talk about the different types of volatility, historical volatility versus implied volatility. Then we'll jump into the platform Quant Connect and try to create a uh, historical volati volatility indicator. So like I said, my name is Benjamin George. I have a PhD in aerospace engineering. Currently I'm a, a data processor and hardware tester for a defense contractor. And I've been a quant since January, 2023. So I'm fairly new at this. My primary platform is Python on Quant Connect. You know, I was putting together these slides. I was watching a little bit of finance YouTube and scrolling through social media and I came across this thought that I wanted to share. If you watch enough of this social media or, you know, finance YouTube, you, you see a bunch of smart, rich, famous, whatever it may be that, that you're, you know, whatever they're promoting at that moment, you'll see a lot of this. I guess that kind of, you know, social media can cause a lot of strong feelings. And I thought this quote was really interesting and a good reminder as for a lot of us who are on the beginning of their quant journey to not demean your own uniqueness by looking at others who are much further along. It doesn't help to be envious of their skill, of their connections, whatever it may be. Um, but remember, you can contribute something unique to this space. So enough of that. We'll jump right into the, the code that we've been building. And just to remind you, this is just with the code overview, we're trying to implement a algorithm to basically trade a covered call strategy, which will help us reduce our cost basis and generate income. We start with the universe of the Magnificent Seven, which is Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, um, Nvidia, and, and Tesla. We take the price data from those stocks on a minutely resolution. We pass them into our alpha model. One of the first things we did in our talk from May 16th is created a simple moving average as an indicator. A couple weeks later, we implemented a implied volatility rank estimator. So we recorded the high volatility and the low implied volatility, calculated the IVR, and then used that as a metric before sending a trade. And then we have our execution model, which basically sends a market order to buy 100 shares and then sell a 20, 25 delta call option with at least 10 days to expiration. And to get more information, you can see that talk on 522. As a reminder, when we buy the, the 100 shares, we actually send a close on market order to sell those 100 shares at the end of the day. It's really like an example code. You would never, well, maybe you would do that in real life, but this is really our, our toy model what we're playing with. Okay. So for today, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to Im implement a historical volatility indicator and trying to see if comparing the historical volatility to the implied volatility will give us an idea of when to buy or sell stocks or really to implement this covered call strategy. So first the basics, we'll talk about the historic volatility. What is historic volatility? Historic volatility is simply the standard deviation of the change of an asset price over a given period. So lots of times how this is in layman's terms, it's, it's basically the typical deviation from the average price. A lot of times you can use daily return, you can use min minutely return, whatever your bar resolution is. And you can calculate a percent of daily return, or sometimes people use the, the natural log of the price difference, or really the natural log of today's price over yesterday's price to calculate the daily return. Ultimately, realized volatility can help you identify entry and exits. If you see that, for instance, today, the historical volatility was significantly higher than in the past, maybe that's a good indicator for getting into the trade. Or if the volatility has gone down, maybe that's a, an a indicator that the price has stabilized and that uh, it's time to get out. So that's historical volatility. Next, we'll talk about implied volatility. And, and for those of you who were on the talk a couple weeks ago, uh, this is just a rehash, but I'll go over it a little more. Implied volatility is the forecast of the magnitude of the underlying security price movement based on the option price. So basically, it's the market's view on what the volatility of the underlying security is. It's a forward-looking view compared to historical volatility, which is based on the past. How we calculate IV is through solving the black model, given the current option price, the days to expiration, underlying stock price, the strike price of the option, that contract that you're looking at, 
the historical volatility and the risk-free interest rate. So the reason I bolded that historical volatility is historical volatility is actually a factor that goes into this implied volatility. And we'll actually see some of those effects when we go into the platform and look at historical volatility versus implied volatility. I do want to point out one really cool article that I found on QuantConnect that compares historical volatility and implied volatility. It goes even further into implied volatility, talks about volatility skews, puts versus calls, really interesting stuff if you want to dive in deeper. So back to our historical volatility. So let's just say we want to implement a historical volatility indicator. There are different parameters that we need to understand. So there's the standard versus the relative volatility. So for instance, standard volatility is what I'm showing here in the bottom. What we'll do is we'll have today's price over the uh, price from yesterday, calculate the natural log of that, and you'll get a return. And you calculate those returns, then you essentially just calculate a standard deviation. So standard deviation is the, the return for today minus the average of the returns squared divided by N minus one or your number of samples minus one and then square root. So that's your standard volatility. Another way you can calculate it is you can look at relative volatility. Relative volatility is simply the volatility relative to the standard deviation of the price. So if the volatility is very, very high, but also the price moves around a lot, well, relative volatility is going to be small. However, if the average of the price returns is large, but the standard deviation of the price is small, what we'll see is this relative volatility is larger. And so what this allows us to do is compare the volatility right now based on the prices that we're seeing. Cool. So that's actually what we're going to implement in the code. So let's jump into the platform. So much of this code is going to be the same from what you saw from before. You set your start date, you set your end date, you set your cash. For this example, I'm only going to look at Google. I mean, you can just uncomment this code if you wanted and run all seven. But for this example, I only ran Google. The only thing that's different that I want to point out from this code versus last week is that I added a dictionary and I called it my volatility indicator dictionary. And that's going to keep track of the volatility for each ticker. So if you uncommented line 11, commented line 12, this code would still work. Again, we're keeping track of the IV, the current IV. We have a dictionary to keep track of the 52 week high, 52 week low IV. Um, here I'm setting the volatility window and that's going to be important when we look at line 34. This is where I uh, implement the relative standard deviation volatility model. So it's a lot of words, uh, but basically this is the, the indicator that QuantConnect has built in and that I'm going to use. Uh, side note, here are the QuantConnect docs. And honestly, when I go in and try to create an indicator, this is where I look first. I look at what QuantConnect already has pre-built. And I look at that. So here we see that there's the standard deviation return model, and you can see all the different parameters that you can adjust. And here I show the relative standard deviation model. And so the two parameters I only do adjust is the time delta here. And that's the period of time between each sample of the security price. So for me, I'm going to look at like the daily volatility. So I set my time delta days is equal to one. And then periods, it's the number of samples that you're going to use uh, to calculate it. So basically it's how wide or how smooth do you want the volatility indicator to be? So in, the, in our case, I actually used 30 days. So here you can see I set the vol window to 30 and then uh, the time delta to one. And then the next line is basically just adding that equity symbol object to my ticker or my vol dictionary here based on the ticker. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. All of this is the same. Just a heads up for those of you who are, are interested in messing with this model. I set the, the warm up time to one day. This is running on minutely data. So if I set this to much longer, it would have to warm up for a lot longer and then it would run my back test. So I just shortened it to one day to expedite my back test, but you can mess with that as well. So all of this is the same. I'm not going to rehash it. Please check out my previous talks if you're interested in understanding more. What I did is I just now added a now a vol model dot volatility. And basically, it's only going to go into this if statement if this is greater than zero. And then down here, I plot the daily IV, the historical volatility, 
And then I plot the IV and the historical volatility on one plot. And the reason for that is you'll see in a minute. Okay, so here's the back test that I ran. It's a short 30 day back test. You can see it bought and sold as expected, that, that covered call. What I'm interested in is actually looking at this. This is a plot of the historical volatility as a function of time. I know it's probably gonna be really hard for you to see because the colors are, are kind of light. So this is 0 0.001 up here 0 0.006 and then up here is 0 0.018. Here you can see the, the IV, this is the black line here. So this is uh, 0.12 and then on the high side, it's 0.28. Now what I wanna show and highlight here is that the trend you can see between the HV, which is on the top and the IV, which is on the bottom is actually very similar. And what you're seeing is the effect of the historical volatility as an input to the implied volatility, you're seeing that they're quite correlated. So the question now becomes, is adding the historical volatility as an indicator actually useful? Maybe it will be useful if we adjust the parameters. Maybe instead of looking at the daily or looking at volatility on a daily scale, maybe we should use more samples. Instead of using 30, we should use 100 or 252 or whatever it may be. These are the parameters that you're going to use to try to filter the historical volatility and understand does using this historical volatility indicator actually provide more information? What I have here is a back test running. Mm, this is actually over a much longer period. Uh, this is from January, 2020 to January, 2024. Um, I have it running right now, but I'll include it as a back test when I uh, publish this on the Quant Connect platform. So be on the lookout for that. Awesome. So let's jump back onto the slides here. When we looked at the, the relative historical volatility to the implied volatility, we saw that it really didn't provide a lot more new information. So the question is, how can we change maybe our historical volatility indicator to be less correlated to the implied volatility and also provide more information to make that trade? We can look at different option strategies. We can look at different ways to change our universe, whether it's the create an automated universe based on the market cap. Another thing that someone from the forum mentioned earlier is looking at factor lens and, and how we can use different types of tear sheets to analyze the data more. And then also look at how IV is calculated. And maybe there's a different model that we should use to do that. Thank you all for joining. I'm gonna stick around for a few more questions, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much.